I'm Froggy, and here is a My Froggy Stuff mashup. This is our 100th mashup! Say what? That's right, and to celebrate, this mashup is all about Sophie and Chloe's new room. We've gathered all of the videos we used to make their new hangout, showcasing all of their favorite things. From BTS to gamer stuff, we got you covered. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. This is our doll backstage dressing room. We started with a cardboard box, just as we did for our doll art room video. Only this time, I glued two pieces of cardboard to the side. Then we covered it with paper and added a few printables. Using a mirror scrapbook paper, we made a mirror for the dressing table, then added a strip of gold scrapbook paper and beads across the top for vanity lights. We made a printable with movie posters, drama textbooks, and small playbooks. We cut and glued the movie posters to the wall, cut small rectangles from a cereal box, stack and glue them together until they are the same width as the spine of the book, then glue on the cover. And I kind of like doing the books this way more so than using the cardboard because it makes for a sturdier book. And it looks a little bit more like pages all around. Cut out the playbooks and a small piece of paper, then line them up and fold them in half. Remove the inside paper to apply glue to the spine, then glue it inside the playbook. We added outlets to our classroom door printable, cut them out, then glue them to the walls. Using skinny sticks, ribbon, and glue, cut the bottom of four skinny sticks at an angle, take two, make an X, and glue them into place, making sure that the top is wider than the doll's hips. Using the first X as a guide, I make another one, cut, and glue two skinny sticks in the shape of an L, glue a small piece at the end, and another one connecting the two. Repeat to make two, glue the bottom corners to the top of the X, glue the other X to the back, glue two cut skinny sticks at the bottom to brace the legs, wrap and glue ribbon around the back for the backrest, then glue on a wider piece of ribbon for the seat to make a director's chair. Using popsicle sticks, skinny sticks, toothpicks, and a wooden dowel, cut the ends off of a popsicle stick, glue skinny sticks on top to connect two of the ends, cut a wooden dowel, glue it between the popsicle sticks, we glued it to the wall, then glued cut toothpicks to brace it to make a clothes rack with overhead storage. And the plastic hangers? Those are a fun find that we found in this paper doll dress-up kit from the dollar store. Each pack came with six plastic hangers. We can also choose to make them using our hanger tutorial and a shaved pipe cleaner. Just in case, we need a few more. Using scrap fabric, felt, cardboard, skinny sticks, and glue, line up four skinny sticks, cut, and glue pieces to the ends, repeat to make two, measure, cut, glue together, two pieces of cardboard that are slightly wider than the sticks, cover with felt, fabric, cut, and glue more skinny sticks at the ends, glue on the second set of skinny sticks halfway up, glue the covered cardboard to the top, glue a few more skinny sticks around the top edge to make a bench with a shoe rack underneath. To give the wood a little shine, I brush it with a Mod Podge paint mixture. Once dry, we filled it with our doll's favorite shoes. Add accessories from previous videos like how to make a doll hat box purse, how to make a doll flat iron, how to make doll health and beauty items, how to make doll makeup, a hairbrush and hand mirror from our Ever After High Getting Ferris doll review, and you're done. Happy crafting! Here is a quick craft and a fantastic way to reuse those odd socks that don't have a match. I am going to make a simplified version of a crocheted ottoman, also known as a poof for a doll, using socks and a needle and thread. I start by taking some long socks to use for the inside of the ottoman. 
Worn out socks with a few holes are perfect. I place the sock on my arm, roll it down, remove it, then continue rolling, and it makes like a little donut. But I want to add a few more layers. So I cut a small hole, then add another sock to make the inside of the ottoman. For the outside, I'm using a sock with a knit pattern. I cut off the top of the sock, turn it inside out, take a needle and thread, pull a long piece of thread, fold it in half, put the loop through the needle, tie a knot at the end to make the thread stronger. Sew a straight line around the top of the sock, going all the way around. When I get back to the beginning, just put the needle right in before the knot and pull tight, making a gather. Make a knot, trim off the excess, turn it right side out, place it over the rolled up sock, push the excess underneath to make your dolls a trendy floor cushion. Use different socks for different looks, and they don't have to just be fancy socks. We made this one completely out of gym socks. And for a larger doll like an 18 inch, we can use leg warmers to make them larger. And you're done. Happy crafting! At Frogwarts Academy, it's time to get ready for dun 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 da. Thanks, Jade. Finals. Final exams? Oh no! Where are my notes? Ah! Relax, Sophie. We got you covered. I was looking at Little Froggy's notes and I was like, wow, these are so awesome. Taking the time to rewrite your notes to make them aesthetically pleasing is a great way to study. So we've made some printables so our dolls can join in on the fun. This is a quick craft that you can download from our blog, myfroggystuff.blogspot.com. We have two pages, one with a notebook, some pens, and a notepad. And the other has magazine holders, calculators, a pot, some leaves, and a light box. Let's start with the spiral notebook. I start by carefully cutting out the two rows of pages, keeping all of the pages together. I use a rectangle of clear plastic as a tool to place on the lines between the pages to make my creases. I find it easier to fold all of the pages the same direction first Then I can go back and fold them accordion style. Use a glue stick to apply glue to the back side of the pages so we can make them two-sided. When I get to the end, I will have one single page left over. Take the other strip of pages, make creases just as before, Glue the last page in the first row to the first page in the second row. Glue the rest of the pages together to finish the spiral notebook. This is the easiest spiral notebook. It only takes a few minutes to make. We have notes printed on the first couple of pages, but then after that they are blank, so your dolls can take their own notes. To go along with our spiral notebook, cut out the colored rectangles, Cut Q-tips to the length of the paper, roll the paper around the Q-tip and glue it in place. Before gluing it, you can trim it down to the portion that you need to make them thinner. Repeat to make the other colors. Cut out the pink rectangles at the bottom, stack them together, run a glue stick across the top edge to make a notepad with tearaway pages. On the second printable, Cut out the magazine holders, glue it onto cardstock, cut it out, fold on the lines, make small cuts on the lines at the bottom, trim off the corners to make tabs. Fold them over, starting with the shorter sides, then the longer sides to make a magazine holder. 
that we can use to store our spiral notebook. Use different colored cardstock on the inside for a little variety. These are large enough to fit the folders that we made in our back to school video. There are six different calculators to choose from. Cut one out, glue it onto cardstock, cut it out, glue it onto the cardstock again, cut it out and repeat a few more times to make a calculator. With so many to choose from, the dolls could have a different one every day of the week. At the bottom of the printable, there is a long white rectangle. Cut it out, wrap it around a marker using glue to secure it along the way. Glue it onto an open space on the paper, add hot glue to the bottom. And remember to always have adult supervision when crafting. While waiting for it to dry, cut out the leaves, glue two mirror cutouts back to back, fold down the center to make the leaf two-sided. Repeat to make more, take the tube and carefully peel it from the paper. Glue the leaves inside to make a potted plant. Cut out the small sign, glue it onto layers of cardstock or black foam board. Cut it out to make a light box for a little motivation. Now our dolls have everything they need for a successful study night. Thank you for joining us while we made study notes. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell and follow us on Instagram at MyFroggyStuff and the Frog Vlog. And you're done. Happy crafting! Last call, present your schools out. Hit the floor, stays home, getting bored. Going to add on to the sister's dollhouse using cardboard, scrapbook paper, artificial plants, a recycled paperboard box, yarn, string or twine, toothpicks, beads, paint, and glue. We are also going to need a black phone case from the dollar store and sticky back velcro so we can finally hang a TV for Sophie. We are adding onto the living room and creating another wall so the dolls can have an entertainment area. On the cardboard, I mark and measure the length of the wall, cut on the line drawn, and remember to always have adult supervision when working with sharp objects. On the wall, I draw and cut out two large windows. Cover the walls with scrapbook paper. I covered them with a brick print and then trimmed in white. Take another piece of cardboard, cover half with paper for the inside of the house and the other half for outside. On the side of the wall that faces the inside of the house, I decide where I want the TV to go. Apply the sticky Velcro to the back of the phone case, then stick the phone case to the wall. Carefully remove the phone case, separating the Velcro, then use a stapler to secure the Velcro. Make a hole through the cardboard and use a brad to secure it to the wall. And my hope is that this will give it a little more support so that every time we remove the phone, we don't rip the paper. Since on the other side, we can now see the ends of the brads, I cut a piece of cardboard and fold over the sides, cover with paper, glue it on top to cover the brads and add a little architecture. Once dry, I glue the wall in place Add a few artificial plants. And now let's go inside. On the inside of the house, this is the wall that faces the couch. And this floor space is going to extend the size of our living room. So we have space to put something under the TV. I am going to use our doll palette furniture from a previous video. I glue two small palettes together. Add another popsicle stick to the bottom palette so that anything we place on the bottom shelf doesn't fall through. Add wooden beads to give it a little height and we place our DVD player from a previous video on top. Add a few books, paint beads with nail polish, glue an artificial plant inside, cut toothpicks, glue three together to make a triangle, glue three more at the corners and have them meet at the top, paint it gold to make a decorative pyramid and I place a small plant inside. 
Now let's add some shelves on the wall. Cut leftover cardboard, cover with paper, cut pieces of yarn or twine in equal lengths. Take one of the pieces, tie a knot at the end to make a loop. Repeat to make more. Place one of the loops over the end of the cardboard. Glue the knot in the center underneath. Repeat on the other side and allow it to dry. Glue the cardboard and the top of the yarn to the wall to make hanging shelves. Add a few plants. Cut paperboard. Cover it with magazine cutouts to make artwork for the walls. Place the cell phone in the holder so the dolls can sit back and enjoy the TV. And if I do not wish to use my cell phone, then glue magazine cutouts onto paperboard for the screen. Make different screens so the dolls can watch different shows. And when they are finished watching TV, they can walk outside and enjoy the great outdoors. Let's see how it looks combined with the sister's living room. Well, for starters, the floor doesn't match. And that's because when I went to the craft store, they told me that they discontinued this pattern. So now I have to pick a new flooring for parts of the house. And I have to recover this floor to match this one. So I take everything out of the room and start the remodel. If only changing floors in a real house was this easy. I bring all of the furniture back in and try to use a rug to cover up the fact that I didn't do such a good job in lining up the paper. So the room is definitely coming along. It's a really good size ratio for the doll to the house, but we're still gonna make a few changes. Like the couch? Yeah, we're gonna be on couch number three. I really do want a sectional, so we're gonna try to remake that. And the carpet? I mean the rug? Yeah, that's no longer working for me. Maybe we can go with something furry. I think that's too dark. I just cut a rectangle of this fuzzy fabric from Michaels to use as a rug. Put our little ottoman poof in the middle and this open area in the back. We can pretend like that is a large window looking outside. I'm going to make a quick background by gluing together two covered pieces of cardboard. I cover a thin strip of cardboard with brick paper, bend the ends, glue it to the wall and the ground, add a few plants to make a garden window outside the living room. The sister's dollhouse is a work in progress, but for now, we are happy to have our new TV area. And you're done. Happy crafting! It's like a tree. I am going to make a doll room inspired by the Barbie video game developer. I like the background so much that I just have to make a room. Using cardboard, and here I am recycling an older craft scrapbook paper, lots of printables from our blog, a few craft ideas from previous videos, and glue. I start by cutting the cardboard so I have two walls and a floor. Begin covering them with scrapbook paper. I used a wood grain on the floor, brick on the outside, and on the inside, we've done a lot of white rooms lately, so I am going to make one pink wall and use printables from our blog on the other. We made one of the printables to look like there are shelves, action figures, and posters on the wall to make an instant backdrop. We can use more printables to add a window to the room. We remade the table from our doll craft room video, only this time we're painting it white. To make a desk, recycle a paperboard box, cover it with scrapbook paper to make the base for a twin bed. Now I don't want to overload the room with pink, so I make our traditional white bedding. I cut out printables from our blog and I can glue them directly onto the wall or add a few layers of cardstock. After a few layers, the paper becomes stiff. Repeat for the other screens, then glue them all onto the cardstock. Cut it out. 
I made sure there was a little space in between the screens so I can bend the paper. Apply glue to the back of the center screen, then glue it to the wall, leaving the other three screens free so they can be angled. Glue more printables onto layers of cardstock to make a keyboard, game controllers, a laptop, and for the laptop, I used one layer of cardstock, then I separated the pieces for the back, added a few more layers of cardstock, then glue them onto the back to make it thicker while allowing it to open and close. We use a stool from our doll classroom and the beanbag chair that we made with our mini sewing machine. We use more printables and cut them out, fold on the lines, glue cardstock inside, for the front, back, and spine, fold over and glue the edges, fold the strips of paper accordion style, glue the pages inside to make books. Add mini toys like my mini Mixie Cues, and it looks like the room is just about finished. However, our computer could use a mouse, so I'm going to make a quick mouse using child size press on nails. I cut a rounded square from doll packaging glue on the nail, draw or paint thin lines to make a mouse on a mouse pad. Finish the room with our doll headset from a previous video. And you're done. Happy crafting! Froggy is a fan of K-pop, and her favorite group is BTS. So we are going to make her a space to display her fandom in miniature. Here is a doll room that we haven't used in a while, so we are going to redecorate it. First, I clean it out so we have a blank canvas to work with. This was the room from our doll egg chair video. It has white walls, a window, and a wood floor. But I'm thinking we need some bright colors. So I've been watching some K-pop music videos. Okay, so I only watched one. It was called Idol by BTS, but it gave me an idea for the walls. Using acrylic paint, I begin painting the center of the wall blue. And since this is a remodel, I have to be very careful not to spill it on the floor. I'm using two shades of blue here, a pool blue and a neon blue. My paper is starting to bubble a little, but I'm hoping that will flatten out when it dries. Now that the room is all blue, I'm gonna add some bright colors on the sides, like yellow and orange. I want the brush strokes to be kind of soft and fade like clouds. Let's add a little pink, add green, red, and a touch of bright blue. Cut strips of yellow paper, glue them around the walls, going up and down and across to make walls inspired by the music video. Now let's add some furniture. Since the walls are so colorful, I'm going to use white foam board to make furniture. Draw rectangles, carefully cut them out, and remember to always have adult supervision when crafting. Glue them together to make a simple twin bed. Cut two rectangles and four squares. Glue the squares between the rectangles to make a shelf. Cut another rectangle and glue it out to the side. Roll a paper tube, glue it to the end to make a desk. Then we use one of our bubble chairs so the dolls have a place to sit. Use fabric to sew a mattress and bedding. On a piece of paperboard, I draw their logo, cut it out, and remember to always have adult supervision when crafting. Place it on the bedding, lightly sponge on a little acrylic paint, fading colors from blue to purple to pink. Remove the stencil, then use a brush to clean up the lines. 
Lightly sketch BTS with a pencil, then go over it with paint. To make a BTS comforter, customize the pillow to match. We made the stencil on tape, then placed it on one of our doll t-shirts, paint it just as before, peel off the tape, paint the letters. I had to totally freehand this. Allow it to dry to make a fan shirt. I really like the way the bed came out, but now I'm thinking maybe I should touch up the walls a little to help it all blend together. I'm adding a little more purple here. We'll go back and touch up the yellow as well. And blue. I really want to capture that cloud look, so I'm just tapping the back wall to give it a lot of texture. I think this will match the bedding a lot better. Glue on, more yellow trim. It looks like you're looking out a window into rainbow clouds. Place the furniture back in the room. I found a magazine at the grocery store. It has free posters inside. And there's lots of stuff that we can use to add a few details to the room. I'm gonna cut this out, glue it to a few layers of poster board to make a fan notebook. I use other items to make more artwork, books, and posters. We add our doll laptop so the dolls can watch their favorite music videos on YouTube. This is the rug from our doll unicorn room. I think the colors match. I glue an artificial plant into a bead and glue it to the shelf because I think all rooms need a touch of greenery. Add a few personal items around the room like glasses, headphones, a book bag, sneakers, and concert tickets for a little clutter. I love clutter. It just adds extra detail and completes our BTS fan room. I love the idea of using a doll room to display your fandom. You can have a room for each of your favorite groups, and they all fit neatly on a bookcase. And this is a great gift idea. Can't wait to show little Froggy this room. Thank you for joining us while we made our BTS fan room. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell and follow us on Instagram at MyFroggyStuff and the Frog Vlog. And you're done. Happy crafting! Uh. to make a galaxy-inspired doll room using a recycled box. Extra paperboard, felt, acrylic paint, navy blue or purple fabric, scrapbook paper, sticker gems, and glue. I start by cutting open one side of the box. Remove the tabs at the top. Reinforce the outside of the box by gluing on another layer of paperboard. Glue together more paperboard to extend the wall. Glue on paper to connect them to make the walls for the room. Cover them with scrapbook paper or paint them with acrylic paint. I'm starting with a black base coat. I tear off a piece of a sponge. I filled my palette with fuchsia, light blue, royal blue, navy blue, teal and purple, and a touch of white and black. Begin sponging on the blue Add a little pink, continue adding more colors to add shading, making clouds of dark and light colors, and I make a few little ribbons of white, then just blend it in, then a few large circles, add small white dots and a few stars to make a galaxy. Now this is painted on the outside of our box. On the inside, we painted the walls purple and made a galaxy on the side. Cut thin strips of paper, glue them around the galaxy and then add small strips to make a window. Cut a piece of paperboard, 
Cover with scrapbook paper, including the bottom of the box, to make the floor. Find a box that can fit inside, cut off one side, glue it onto the other side, glue leftover paperboard onto the sides, cover with paper to make a platform, cut felt to fit on top, trace it onto fabric, cut it out leaving a border, sew a straight line on the line drawn, leaving an opening so it can be turned inside out. Place the felt inside, then sew it closed to make a mattress. To make the bedding, we used the same galaxy painting technique on fabric. Matched it with a solid color for the other side, cut a single layer of fleece or felt, then we continued, just like the mattress, to make a comforter. Make them smaller and fill them with fluff to make pillows. And since this is a space-themed room, we painted a few sci-fi pillows. Cut and cover a smaller box with paper. Cut paperboard or cardboard, cover with paper, glue one to the bottom, to the top, a few on front, to make a dresser. And we cut out the back for a hidden storage place. Cut a star out of paperboard, paint it black, then silver, place sticker gems around the edge, glue a strip of paper around the outside edge, to make marquee stars. Use leftover paperboard, to make art by gluing a few layers together, cover with paper, make a constellation on a piece of cardstock using sticker gems and paint. Glue it on top, glue on strips of paper for the frame, then attach it to the wall. We add our ottoman poof from a previous video, a mini TARDIS that we found at Barnes & Noble. We added glow-in-the-dark paint to our doll lightsaber, then placed it in the room. And these Star Wars Micro Machines are the perfect size to look like models for the dolls. There are even minifigures so the dolls can have their own action figures. We even use a pop keychain for a little extra sci-fi fun. I even found a wind-up toy for R2-D2 at the Disney Store, creating the perfect room for a sci-fi loving doll. And when playtime is over, the smaller accessories can fit inside the dresser, the dresser and bedding fit under the bed, and everything goes inside the box. Until next time. And you're done. Happy crafting! Listen to the Midnight Radio to make BT21 pillows using felt. Let's start with Tata. I start by drawing a heart shape with chalk. You may find it easier to draw it first on a piece of paper, then cut it out. I used a post-it so it can stick onto my fabric and all of my pillows will come out about the same size. When making your pattern, make sure to account for a seam allowance because this image is going to get a little bit smaller. Carefully cut it out and remember to always have adult supervision when crafting. Cut two. Using a pencil, I lightly draw a face. Make sure to remember there is a seam allowance, so you don't want to get too close to the edge. Thread a needle with black embroidery floss. Starting from the back, begin to stitch over the lines drawn. On my very first stitch, I go back through and tie it in a knot on the back locking the stitch in place. Then continue stitching to make a round eye. I guess that's kind of round. We are sewing by hand, so things might not be perfect. After completing one eye, I move over to the other, trying my best to keep them even. Add eyebrows, then tie and knot the thread in the back. Take yellow thread, begin stitching a small yellow oval under the eyes. I started with a little cross so that I know the dimensions of my oval. Then stitch back and forth over it. Tie it in the back 
Then make a single black line right across the middle to make a face. Place the other felt heart on top, starting on one of the straight sides. Sew a straight stitch all the way around the edge. Here I take my time and try to keep the stitches close together, leaving an opening so it can be turned inside out. I use the end of a chopstick to push out some of the areas. Gently pull the felt here and there to even out some of the lines. Add fluff, sew the opening closed, tie and knot the thread, then push the needle back through the felt coming out the other end. Be very careful when doing this. Trim off the excess thread to hide the tail end inside of the pillow. To make a Tata -ta doll pillow, cut two pink circles, four ears, and two long pieces of felt for the fluff in the ears. Use white thread, place the white felt right in the middle of the pink ears, and stitch it into place. Take the other ear cutouts, place them on top, sew around the edge, turn it inside out, lightly stuff the ears on one of the large circles, stitch on a face, take the ears, place them at the top, add the other circle, sew around the edge of the circle, leaving an opening at the bottom so it can be turned inside out, add fluff to make cookie. Cut two blue circles, four ears, I cut two pieces of gray felt for the inside of the ear, place them onto the blue, stitch on the gray, place the other side of the ear on top, flip inside out. On one of the large circles, use felt to sew on a nose, use thread to sew two closed eyes, and a smile. Place the ears on the face, turn down. I just fold it back a little to try to make sure my placement is right. Place the other large circle on top, Sew around the edge, turn it inside out, add fluff, sew the opening closed to make Koya. Cut two yellow circles that go in on the sides, a white circle, and just two black ears. Stitch a face onto the circle, stitch the circle onto the yellow felt, place the other piece of yellow felt on top, sew a straight stitch around the edge, turn it inside out, I am really trying to press out those edges so you can see the curve on the side. This shape was kind of difficult for me. Add fluff. I remove the face because I think the eyes are just a little too big. I cut another piece of white felt and try again. Then stitch it back on. Sew it closed. Stitch on the ears to make chimmy. The process of making the different characters is very similar. For RJ, we cut two cloud shapes out of felt, then stitched on the face, cut two small ovals, fold them in half for ears, position them on the face, add another layer of felt, then sew just as before. Cut tan circles, a mouth, and two arms, sew on a face, add the arms, the other circle of felt, sew and flip, add fluff, sew the opening closed, Make two small brown feet by sewing together two pieces of felt. Sew them to the bottom to make shooky. Cut light blue felt into a sock shape. Cut two, sew on eyes. Cut four ears, stack and sew two together. Turn them inside out. Cut a long strip, place the ear behind the eye. Line the strip up with the edge. Sew it on with a straight stitch. Take the other half, line up the raw edges so the good side is on the inside. Sew a straight stitch going all the way around. Leave a hole at the bottom of the neck so you can flip it inside out. Take a rectangle of a darker blue, fold it in half, and cut out a mane. Stitch it between the ears, then fold over the two sides and stitch them together. When I get to the top, I push the needle back down through so it comes out the bottom of the mane. Sew on a pom-pom. Sew a pink heart onto the nose to make mung. Take rectangles of gray and white felt, stack them together, sew a straight line along one edge. Open it up, fold in half, cut out a circle with a point. Sew them together, turn it inside out, add fluff, stitch on a face, 
so it closed to make Vaughn. Completing our BT21 doll pillows. Little Froggy, also known as Chloe, is a fan of BTS. So I think this is the perfect addition to her doll fan room. Thank you for joining us while we made BT21 doll pillows. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell and follow us on Instagram at MyFroggyStuff and TheFrogVlog. And you're done. Happy crafting! a bay window to the dollhouse. Like maybe a cute little window with a seat in it and then some shelves on the side? We are going to make our room using foam board from the dollar store, recycle clear plastic from packaging, leftover fabric, felt, and glue. And remember to always have adult supervision when crafting. I start by measuring a 13 inch by 15 inch rectangle. Cut on the line drawn to use for our back wall. I cut a second rectangle that is 15 by 12 inches to use for the floor. Using a ruler, I begin planning my window on the floor. On the 15 inch side, I draw a line three inches from the edge, then make another three inch mark on the line on both ends. Take the wall and transfer the marks at the bottom. Go up three inches on the wall and draw a large rectangle that corresponds with the lines drawn on the floor. Cut it out. On the floor, draw the shape of the window. I drew diagonal lines going two inches in on both sides. Use the cutout from the wall to make rectangles to fit the angles. Cut another piece of foam board for the back. Take leftover pieces of foam board and cut two trapezoids the same shape as our drawing. Using the trapezoid as a base, double check all of your measurements and make adjustments where needed. Take the rectangles, cut out windows, cut clear plastic from packaging to glue on the back side of the window so our windows look like they have glass. Glue the bottom trapezoid into the cutout so it's right on top of the edge. Repeat for the top, glue the windows to the trapezoids before I glued it down, I can see that I go over the edge just a little, so I'm gonna need to trim that. But foam board is easy to cut, so we make adjustments where needed. I glued on the sides first, now I'm adding the back panel to make our bay window. Ooh, I like the way this is turning out. On the floor, I glue down grass scrapbook paper, glue the wall to the floor, Cut leftover foam board from the window cutouts into three inch triangles. Glue them underneath the window for support so the seat on the inside can handle the doll's weight. Then on the inside, cut the ends off of jumbo craft sticks, glue them onto the floor, staggering the length as I go to make a hardwood floor. Cut foam board into one inch strips, glue them onto the walls on the sides of the window I glued two on each side, cut smaller pieces to glue between to make two shelving units on the sides. Cut leftover foam board into half inch and quarter inch strips. Use it to add trim on the inside and we're gonna clean up the back, covering all of the glue spots on the clear plastic. I cut a trapezoid of black foam to glue right on top for a roof. Glue artificial plants to the bottom so when they're inside, they can see a little nature outside the window. Let's turn it around and go back inside. On a piece of paper, I draw the trapezoid that is the same shape as the seat. Add a seam allowance, cut it out, use it as a pattern to cut two pieces of fabric and one piece of felt. Lay the fabric good side to good side on top of the felt Sew a straight line along the edge, leaving an opening so it can be turned inside out. Sew the opening closed to make a cushion for the window. Make smaller squares 
for pillows. Decorate the shelves with accessories to finish our doll bay window, where our dolls can cuddle up and enjoy the view. Speaking of views, we can place our doll backyard behind it so they can look out into the garden. Then place another one of our rooms beside it to expand our dollhouse. Thank you for joining us while we made a doll bay window. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell and follow us on Instagram at MyFroggyStuff and the Frog Vlog. And you're done. Happy crafting! IKEA inspired craft. I really like the simplicity of these two beds, so let's make them both. I need to get a new Sharpie. Along with a few wooden dowels. I went through my crafting supplies and I have some jumbo craft sticks and some popsicle sticks. We are going to use these to make our bed frame. I start by cutting the ends off of jumbo craft sticks and remember to always have adult supervision when crafting. Line them up using a ruler, cutting where needed to reach 11 inches. I do make my beds a little small for the dollhouse because it saves space. However, you can easily add that extra half an inch. I made two rows, staggering the jumbo craft sticks. Glue another jumbo craft stick going right down the center. I'm going to need two so I can make a long side rail. Sand any rough edges smooth, then repeat to make two side rails. Make two more that measure seven inches for the rails at the top and bottom of the bed. Take round wooden dowels, take one and measure to three inches, cut it, repeat to make two, sand the raw edges. Now I have two nine inch leftover pieces. We are going to use these for the headboard. Glue the footboard onto the three inch wooden dowel half an inch from the top. Repeat on the other side Repeat for the 9 inch wooden dowels, glue on the side rails, take another wooden dowel, cut it to 8 inches, glue it across the top so a half an inch hangs out on either side. We are going to need a little more support across the bed, so I take coffee stirs, cut off the ends so it can rest on the inner craft sticks. Cut several and glue them going straight across to complete our very simple IKEA bed frame. For our second bed, we are starting off with the same side rails, only this time we are using square wooden dowels for the post. Take one of the wooden dowels and measure it to two and a half inches. Cut, then sand the raw edges smooth. Make two for the bottom of the bed. Cut and sand three more that are six inches long for the headboard. Glue the smaller post to the bottom bed rail right at the edge. Take the top rail and glue on the six inch wooden dowels, two and a half inches from the bottom, gluing the third one right in the center. I was going to use popsicle sticks, but that's gonna create a seam right in the center. So instead, I'm using coffee stirs and I'm gonna cut them to fit right across. I cut four and I glued one across the top then one across the middle, then glue the last two right in between to evenly space them. Glue on the side rails to connect the headboard to the bottom of the bed. Cut coffee stirs, glue them across to make support for the mattress. Wow, now we have two IKEA beds all made out of wood. And let me tell you, it felt like I was putting together a real IKEA bed with all of those little pieces. But our dolls can't sleep on them like this. So we're gonna need to make some bedding. Cut fabric to get two seven and a half by 11 and a half inch rectangles. Lay them good side to good side, then cut two large pieces of felt to go on top. Make sure that the felt is longer than the cotton fabric. Using a sewing machine or a needle and thread, sew a straight line a fourth of an inch from the edge of the cotton fabric all the way around. 
leaving an opening so it can be turned inside out. Make sure to turn it between the two layers of cotton fabric. So the fleece is now on the inside. Use a needle and thread to sew the opening closed to make a plush mattress. Cut a 12 and a half by 12 and a half inch square. Fold over the bottom twice and iron it flat. Sew a straight line going all the way across. Fold over both sides twice. Sew a straight line. Then on the top, fold it over a fourth of an inch, then about a half an inch. Sew near the bottom edge to make a sheet that we can fold over on our bed. Cut two three and a half by four and a half inch rectangles with the good sides on the inside, sew around the edges, leaving an opening so it can be turned inside out. Add fluff, sew it closed to make pillows. Now let's add a little bit of pattern. I've picked out a few prints that remind me of Ikea. I like gray because we can add any color to it to change the mood. I cut two 12 and a half by 12 and a half inch squares and a larger piece of fleece. Lay the fabric good side to good side. Make sure the fleece is underneath. Then sew all the way around the edge, leaving an opening. Flip it inside out. Stitch the opening closed to make a comforter. That is reversible! Let's lay this on the bed, lining it up with the sheets, then fold it back. I use an iron to make creases so the covers lay over the edge. Cut two rectangles that are five and a half by four inches. Lay them good side to good side. Sew a straight line a fourth of an inch from the edge. But only on this side. Then we open it up and fold over the top a fourth of an inch, then a half an inch. Sew a straight line along the edge. Fold it in half so the good side is on the inside, lining up the raw edges. Sew a straight stitch along the side and across the bottom. Flip it inside out. Place the pillow inside to make a pillowcase. Since this bed is reversible, I made two sets of pillowcases. For our IKEA-inspired beds. I like how tall this headboard is. However, it doesn't offer a lot of support for the pillows. You gotta lean this one probably against a wall. The headboard for this one is shorter, but you don't have to worry about those pillows falling over. But we can hang things on this tall headboard, and I think that's pretty cool. Thank you for joining us for this IKEA-inspired craft. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell, and follow us on Instagram at my froggy stuff and the frog vlog. And you're done. Happy crafting! joining us for this my froggy stuff mashup let us know what mashups you would like to see in the comments down below like comment share and subscribe don't forget to ring the bell and follow us on instagram at my froggy stuff and the frog vlog and we will see you next time bye